Well, I got some absolutely amazing antiques and collectibles to share with you today in today's uh, haul. I'm an antique dealer, reseller in the UK. I buy and sell antiques and collectibles and hopefully sell them for a profit. Purpose of today's video is to share with you what I bought. And I do have some really interesting and nice pieces. Shall we get started? I'm going to start with this, which is a bulkhead clock off a ship. Beautiful brass. Now this one is a Smith's APW 6578. Um, and it is date stamped for the year 1955. Now there's no name of a ship or anything like that on there that I can see anyway. However, look at the condition of it. It is absolutely spectacular. Now I did some research on these bulkhead clocks and some of them pull really good money. This one is a runner. It's gonna need a service so it keeps accurate time, but it is a runner. It is running and working and clean and mint. Beautiful condition. To be honest, it was the cleanest uh, bulkhead clock I think I've seen, period. Uh, and this is Smith's. Serial number, sec 2040, year 1955. So, beautiful thing. It cost me quite a bit of money. I paid £100 sterling or $140. However, these are very, very desirable. And when they're in this condition, that's a real good little find. So that'll be up on the website today. I've had a little selection of mining memorabilia. I'll show you them in one at a time. So we got a nice little brass miner's box. This is for holding snuff or chewing tobacco or something like that. Um, they, always, they call them snuff boxes, but uh, they have multiple purposes. Now what makes these really val valuable is when they're dated and named and got a colliery on them. This one unfortunately is blank, but it come in at the right money. I'll share the price with you in a bit. <clears throat> Next we have this one. Now not, not a lot of you will know what this is. This is to do with mining again, but this is a watch case. So a miner would put his watch in here to go underground and he would protect his watch and the miner whilst underground. What do I mean by protect the miner? You can't have sparks underground. So this would not only protect the watch from coal dust and other things, it would also make sure that there was no sparks from anything to do with the watch. So a nice little object there. This one could have been serious money. As I said, what makes these very valuable is the engraving. And you can see this one has been engraved. I don't know if you can see it actually on here. It has been engraved all the way around. And it is very, very hard to see. But it's a date on there of what looks to be 1917. But I'm going to have to change the angle, see if I can capture the uh, writing in photographs. Seriously faint. Just wondering whether somebody would be able to go over that. What's there? You can make some of it out. It looks like something Jones, but there. Anyway, we have a beautiful box. This is a really, really nice box. I'm just so devastated that the writing is so faded and faint and rubbed. 
But I'm going to see what I can capture with images on the right in. And I will put the images in that I capture so you can see what's wrote on there. But it's, um, it's such a shame because what makes this one rare is that right in and the date. One more piece of this little haul, or this little group, I got more to show you. But these, the mining memorabilia and this piece come in together. And what do we have? An absolute beautiful George V, 1910 uh, money bank, or a royal bank. I think it's formed like a queen bee. Looking at that, huh? Not 100%, but uh, it does look a bit like an insect. Turn him round, unfortunately it has got a little tiny bit of loss to the iron. Sorry, I uh, had to deal with a customer. So, as I was saying, it's had a very tiny bit of loss just by here. This is an original, but look how clean it is. Forget the loss by there for a second. Look how clean this actually is. What a beautiful example. And it will still display and look perfect. Now, I had a quick Google on these. Uh, most of the ones you find of these have been severely overpainted or scratched or damaged with a missing corner. There's none of these in this condition, believe it or not, that I could find. So that is so mine then. To be honest with you, you could buy a broken one and take the back plate off if you want. Because you can buy a broken one for next to nothing. And in good condition, they were silly money. So, what do they owe me? You have the 1910 money bank. The two beautiful snuff boxes and the miner's watch case. Now they come in as a group for £40 sterling. £40 sterling is $60 for them four. Oh, come on. I am seriously devastated by this. This one, I probably wouldn't have let go of if the writing had been good, but uh, hey ho. Next piece come off um, a subscriber of mine and a, a dealer I do business with. I bought a load of Royal Albert this week, uh, as you probably saw in my video, and I phoned, emailed the contact I got, and he came down, had the Royal Albert off me, but he turned up and he had a piece with him that he wanted to see what we do trade. Now he already had the research. Um, on this particular item. He knew everything about it. He'd even tried to sell it for £500 on eBay himself. Let me show you what we got. Now, when I purchased this off him, the glass was broke. It was stinking dirty inside where the glass had been broken. And the back was a mess where you had all the bolts sticking out and everything, which were going to do damage to the, somebody's wall. It's been taken apart, it's been stripped, it's been cleaned. This has had a foam back in now to protect your walls from the bolts sticking through that are holding the brass or bronze on. It's had a new glass, it's had a clean, and it is ready to go. And it looks absolutely spectacular. Now this is either gilt bronze or gilt brass. There's a few of them available on the internet. Um, and there's been a few sold through land auctions. I have found them sold through the likes of Hanson's Auctions for two and a half hundred pound. Um, and then you have the likes of um, the website First Dibs has an almost identical one for 2,200. 
which would take that up to over three thousand um, dollars and there's a few in America for three thousand dollars three and a half thousand dollars so they're all over the place now as I've said there have been a few sold through UK auctions for between sort of 200 if you like and 400 pounds sterling so between three and seven hundred dollars this one is in now in really good condition looks amazing now I paid in the state it come in 175 pounds sterling which isn't far off 270 280 dollars it then cost me 20 pounds sterling $30 to get it restored. I know that's a gift, wasn't it? Uh, what can I say? Um, it was a favour for me, I think. So, the glass, been replaced, it's been cleaned through, the backing was taken off, sorted out, it's then had a foam backing put on it, and resealed, new wire put on it, everything, or rope, all for £20 sterling. It now owes me £195. Now, if you bear in mind the one on first dibs is up 2200 that's the only one currently available in the UK that I could find. I've gone in at half. Oh, why not? Um, I'm happy. Uh, the dealer I dealt with is happy. We're both happy. That's a fully restored piece. I'm going to crate that up now. If you haven't seen how I do my crates, watch the video uh, that I done the other day. So that's actually going to be bubble wrapped severely. Uh, and in a wooden crate. I make my own crates and they'll be in a crate and it'll be stored safe and secure and it won't see the light of day again now until it's sold. Next piece, I got us another piece of artwork if you like. I class the gilt bronze horse as artwork as well. We have a watercolour painting. Now if I hide that a second. I'll show you this beautiful watercolour. Now have a look what it says here. So it reads, Cornstalks, view from Waterhead Lake Windermere, 19th century watercolour and crayon, artist unknown. It is very well painted. And I mean very well painted. The balance is perfect, the quality is there. Now, the downside is it has foxing, severe foxing all the way through. It also has a very small hole I just saw, did I? Or was it, uh, no, it might have been a bit of the crayon color. So it hasn't got a hole. It's just the fox in there. No? Yeah. <laughs> I keep looking at that by there and it looked like a hole. It's actually a painted little boat. So yeah, it's just, it's just the fox in. So it is foxed. They wanted £350 for it in the gallery or whatever it was. They couldn't sell it. It ended up, as you can see with all these little tags, going through Anthemian, Anthemian Auction in Cardiff. Where a dealer purchased a whole host of paintings. And he sold me this one for £20 sterling or $30 in Splot Car Boot Sale. Now... I think the image is absolutely beautiful. It really is. Now, if you're a farmer or something like that, you know, you'd ignore or you'd forgive. Sorry, it would be a better word. Hang on. You could forgive the fox in uh, to have that quality of painting hanging on your wall. It really is superb. Um, for twenty pounds sterling. It's going up on the website with the fox in. I don't care. Um, purely because the subject matter and the quality. Subject matter is superb. If you're a farmer, you know, then that's one for you. I'll call it there. Uh, I don't want to just keep going on and on and on. To be honest with you, I love everything I bought today.
The money bank is a real good winner. When you consider the four pieces come in, the, you know, the two snuff boxes and that, all at pretty much a tenner each or $14 each, that is a real winner. The bulkhead clock is a double up, no problem at all. <laughs> the gilt bronze or gilt brass horse, I actually wrote the history down, if anybody's interested in the history. Uh, the horse was bought from the King of the Belgians. Um, it was bought by a circus, and that circus was established in 1845. Um, in 1874, that property and all the paraphernalia to do with that property was bought by none other than P.T. Barnum uh, for 33000 or fifty five to $60,000 in 1874. Now, if you don't know who P.T. Barnum is, have you seen The Greatest Showman with uh, Hugh Jackman? That's P.T. Barnum. Anyway, they appeared multiple times before Queen Victoria at the different locations. Um, and the performance always finished with Black Eagle, who is the name of the horse depicted here in my frame, uh, would actually dance to music. So, you know, if I finish on this beautiful, elegant note, you gotta admit that looks something quite special. And <laughs> hanging up in any office, would look spectacular. So, I'm over the moon. Hopefully you've enjoyed, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.